Hi everyone, I'm Emily Larlam, aka KikoPup on YouTube, and this video is on tips for public access training for service dog teams. Now this is episode two, and I'll link a playlist of all my other service dog videos in the description below for you guys to check out later. Now this video is made specifically for service dog teams to help them with training their dogs for public access. However, these uh, exercises are extremely beneficial for any dog to build reliability, confidence, and also resilience when out and about in different environments. This episode, I'm gonna be talking about teaching your dog to be confident in bathrooms. Now, you might not go in a bathroom with your pet dog because it's just not necessary, but for those of you that are doing these exercises with pet dogs, what you can do, it, these exercises will be beneficial for everyday noises around the house, such as in the kitchen, maybe your dog's scared of the vacuum cleaner or when you blow dry your hair, or when they need to have a bath, go to the vet or go to the groomer. So these are also other, uh, play, uh, these are other places that service dogs would go to. Now, as I said before in episode one, in no way do these educational videos condone training a fake service dog to bring places that pet dogs are not allowed by law. This video is to help service dog teams work on public, ex public access exercises and for pet dog owners to follow along so that they can bring places that dogs are allowed by law that are fun to go to, such as public parks and stores, such as pet stores, and places that are dog friendly where dogs are allowed to go to, where the dogs can be well behaved and well mannered and confident, reliable, and safe when out and about. As you might have seen in my previous tutorials, I like to break the training up into small, easy steps for the dog where the dog is confident and having a positive emotional response every step of the way. So why do I have this collection of weird trash cans and dishes and plates and, and a hairdryer? Because what we can do is work on the sounds that are in a public restroom first before having to take the dog there. Because what can happen if you took a puppy or a dog that's never been in a restroom before and they go in a restroom and suddenly the hand dryer goes off or the paper towel mechanical paper towel goes off or suddenly there's a loud trash can noise or a flushing toilet, uh, it might just be way too much for the dog and the dog could be, their first experience with the bathroom was slippery floor, scary, uh, it smells gross, and there are all these scary noises in the bathroom, like lots of overwhelming noises for, for a dog with sensitive hearing. So what we can do is work on everything separately. So uh, I suggest working on all the noises they might hear, and I find this extremely fun because it's almost like uh, those people who put the soundtrack on horror movies or any movie, they you know do the stomping feet to practice to to put the soundtrack of on the you know the person who's sneaking sneaking around or trudging through the mud and so you can make the sound effects of the bathroom without having to be in the bathroom and then the dog realizes that all these sounds are fun and they mean nothing that just it means treats are coming and that they re remain calm and relaxed now the extremely important thing to remember with this training is that it's not just about making the sound and feeding a treat that's not going to change the dog's emotional response to the sound or condition a new emotional response to the sound it uh it could go backwards. So you can make a scary noise, your dog startles and you feed a treat, and then you keep doing that. And if you don't make the noise soft enough or from farther away um, at first, uh, the dog can start to dislike the noise anyway. So you can actually go backwards. And a lot of people do that when they're training their dog with a clicker. Uh, they make clickers really loud. And if you click the clicker and then give a treat, some dogs will run away because the clicker is so loud. So that's why I also like to put poster tack in my clicker so it's muffled and less loud, especially at first when training a dog, but they're super loud. So you could begin with, uh, if you had a puppy, a new puppy, with training the sound of the clicker first. And the other thing that's important is that most dogs, if a sound comes out of nowhere, it can be creepy. So um, I specifically like to show the dog that I'm making the sound. So the dog will, 
uh, if you were working with two people, you could make sure that the dog was looking over at the person. Maybe they can make a kissy noise or go blah, 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 with their voice so that the dog's looking over. And then they, uh, if your dog was sitting across there training with you and I was your helper, I could then start making the noise. And not just one time, but just small continuous noises. Because I find that dogs will startle more if the noise just happens out of the blue and they don't know where it came from. So a small continuous noise, and when they're doing good with that, a single noise like that. And then uh, as you increase the volume of the noise, you can do it continuously. And then with breaks in between, like that. So with all these different objects, you can do the same game. Um, the blow dryer, you could have it on in the distance. If you're working alone, you could have the blow dryer in another room really loud and then the dog is just getting used to the sound of the blow dryer uh, while it's at a distance, continuously running. Of course, don't burn your house down. Keep checking on it that you're not <laughs> burning the counter or something like that. But the same with the vacuum cleaner. And I do have a video on training your dog to be calm around a vacuum cleaner, and I'll link that in the description below because that's another thing you can break up into, into small steps to work on so that the dog uh, doesn't get overwhelmed because it's all just too much for the dog. If you have a pet dog that's extremely worried about noises, or maybe you've adopted a dog that hasn't been socialized very well and is also really nervous of noises, one way to get the ball rolling is using something like a food puzzle, um, those games where they move things to get treats. A simple one is just having a plastic container that you cut a hole in and sand the edges put some kibble in, close the container, and the dog rolls the container around themselves to get the treats out, and they're making the container make the noise. That's a good first step uh, for teaching dogs to be comfortable with noises in the environment. Another one is teaching the dog to make the noise themselves. So uh, for service dogs, a great one, and pet dogs, is teaching them to close a door. So at first you can muffle the door, and the dog's pushing the door closed, and it's making a muffled noise because there's some styrofoam or cloth in between the door where it closes. And then when the dog is very confident with that, you can let the dog hear you making the noise from a distance and then teach the dog to close the door where it bangs and makes a noise. Another fun game <laughs> is teaching the dog to put the trash away on their own. So teaching them to make the noise of the trash can by stepping on it. Um, this can be a little tricky to train if your trash can is hard to step on. So that's why I, uh, that's why I have multiple trash cans. Uh, actually, this is my office one, but it's, it's got the scariest noise. So we're gonna work with that. Sounds like one of those old fashioned trash cans. But uh, this one's super hard to press down and open. Um, so that's hard for dogs. And it's got a metallic noise. For teaching the dog to operate the trash can on their own, choosing a trash can that's easy to press and with a big lever, or you can add to the lever. So you can make a big pad by taping or gluing some wood. So they just have to step there and it will open it easily because the bigger the lever, the easier it will be uh, for the lid to open. Okay. If you have a helper, you can work at a distance, but if not, you can do what I'm doing here. And I'm just gonna make the noise extremely softly because the dog is right near me, good. And sometimes you can just make the noise and feed a treat and that's going to work really well. But if the dog is the type that really finds your voice reinforcing or they're really conditioned to love their marker, you can make the noise, click and then feed a treat or make the noise and then say good and then feed a treat so the dog doesn't think it's some sort of creepy thing. Good. So I'm gonna make the noise a little bit. Good. And I'm making the noise of this one. Good. And the noise of this one. Good. And the noise of uh, that. Good. Awesome. And the noise of this pot with a spoon in it. Good. Another tip for building confidence with noises is moving away from the dog and marking as the dog moves towards the noise, as well as you can toss a treat away from you if you have to be stationary while making the noise and then reinforce the dog by marking when they come towards you and the noise. 
So um, I actually have a video on teaching tools for grooming where you're teaching the dog to come on a recall to a Dremel or the sound of the clippers. And that is also a really great exercise. So I'll link that in the description below. But here I have the pot and the spoon. Most people have these at their house. And what I'm doing is I'm dropping a treat and after he eats it and I'm further away, I'm gonna make the noise of the pot. So he's following me and then I can drop the treat, make the noise of the pot. Good! And you can see that he's really enjoying this game. Good, good boy. Go legs, go legs, legs, go legs, go legs, go legs. Oh, this is really loud. Go legs. Hee 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 hee. Twirl, spin. Hee hee. Oh, I attracted a wish. <laughs> so, as you can see, by starting out really slow, and you're not gonna do all that in the same training session, uh, <laughs> but as you can see, you can make noise, you can create positive associations with really scary noises. And it's all done by going in small approximations. Hey, Wishy. So she came out to see what, what fun was going on because she heard the loud banging noise. <laughs> If you are uncomfortable with letting the dog eat treats from the ground during the training session, like I'm showing in this video, you can instead toss treats into dog food bowls that are strategically placed, use a treat machine, or have a helper feed the dog a treat. Now for the big trash can noise. Here we go. Good. Good job. When your dog is extremely comfortable with the noises, you can then do them in close proximity to the dog, but do them softer than you did when you were playing the other exercises, because when they're closer to the noise, it's gonna be louder in their ears, and it's also going to be a little bit of a startle, um, or they could find it aversive to have the sudden noise happen near their face. As you can see, Wish is really comfortable with loud noises because she used to be scared of loud noises when she was a puppy and we really worked on it. So I can like bang this trash can while her, <laughs> while her head is inside and she doesn't care because we worked on it. So behavior is changeable if you take the time to change it, as Ted Turner says. So um, this is, these exercises look silly, but they're so important for building confidence in your dog in our loud and noisy world. These trays can simulate a bathroom door noise. Good. Good. If you have children in your home, I suggest working on these exercises first to the point where the dog can be fine with just random loud noises near them before asking the kids to help you with this training because what can happen is uh, the kids will get excited about making all these noises and then it will be too much for your dog. So um, both of my dogs, I've worked on these exercises already. So this is not the first training session that I've done with them. So I've got my drum set here and my dogs and I'm gonna, good. Good, good job guys. At first you can make it a fun game where the dogs are moving fast and a little bit excited and finding it a fun game with you where you're drumming, woohoo. Um, but then after that, 
You can work on some calmer behaviors, asking them to settle here. You can use a mat to make it, uh, to make it more of a picture of relaxing. And then you're gonna go back to the start. So you're just gonna make a tiny noise and feed them a treat for relaxing while the noises are near them. So this type of stuff is gonna simulate, say they're at a restaurant or in a bathroom and something drops near them, they're not gonna freak out, or the person who's right next to them in the stall throws something into their trash can and then it makes this scary noise right near your dog who's in the stall next door. You can use a blow dryer to simulate the hand dryer in public restrooms. Good boy. Woohoo! Woo! Good boy! Awesome! Now we're gonna approach the blow dryer. Hey, look. Good boy! Good boy! Woohoo! Building confidence around new objects. If you have a dog that's worried about the presence of a novel object in their space like this, where as the object goes towards the dog, they back away from the object, uh, or they don't want to go really close to the object, you can build confidence of being in close proximity to different weird and novel um, objects by playing the game of cueing your dog to touch the objects. And of course, you want to make sure that objects aren't going to make noises when the dog touches them at first, because that's going to probably scare your dog. So what you want to do is um, ask for the touch cue with your hand, and then say you begin with a wooden spoon where your dog is touching a wooden spoon as you move away, and then while you're sitting stationary, good. And then you can throw the treat away from you and the object, mark the dog coming towards it again, and then throw the treat away. And if your dog starts stopping further away from you, then you know that they're not very confident. Also, the speed at which they come towards the object tells you how comfortable they are with the object. So with any new um, object or sound, to begin with, you want the dog moving towards it rather than it moving towards the dog. As you might have noticed, when I'm cueing her to touch the object, it's coming to the side rather than coming straight at her like that to begin with. So I'm, the object is coming out to the side, touch, good. And this side, touch, good. And then when the dog's comfortable with that, you can directly move the object into the dog's space. Touch, good. And as you can see, now she's not backing away from the spoon when I move it into her space like that. And she's really confident with this object coming at her. Good. So perhaps you have a dog that doesn't like when children run with sticks or, or spoons at a restaurant. And so this exercise is gonna be really helpful for that sort of situation. Or maybe someone's handbag that's swinging right near their face. If you're training your own service dog and you're really worried that your dog might offer touching people stuff, what you can do is just use objects that don't look like stuff in the real world and work on the touching behavior to begin with at home uh, in your training room and then quickly proceed to the point in your training where your dog's not interacting with any object that's presented to them. As you can see here, uh, when I move the spoon into her space, she's no longer touching it or pawing at it. And to achieve that, you can just feed a treat as the object comes into the dog's uh, space like that, and then move it in and move it out. And you can see she's just looking at it, but not doing anything in regards to it, but feeling confident that it's there. 
good job. Where it's uh, a little bit harder to uh, counter condition a dog to not be worried about an object, I find with clients the shortcut of getting the dog to interact and feel confident on doing their own thing with the object helps them to build that confident, confidence at first. But if you were not, if you didn't want to do that, you could simply just go in smaller approximations where you're moving the object closer to the dog like this or moving the object away and marking the dog for moving towards it without touching it um, as the game that you play. Moving into a confined space or corner. A lot of dogs naturally don't want to walk into a corner or put themselves into a very small confined space, like a bathroom stall. So what we can do is work on these exercises in places that the dog is familiar, such as your own bathroom or a closet, before then practicing out and about. Once your dog is comfortable and confident in the tight space, you can start asking for behaviors such as spin, twirl, moving with you in the heel position, and practice turning around you perhaps to get into the tight space. I don't suggest working on sit and down because you probably don't want your dog to do that in a public restroom. Good. Ready. Twirl. Good. I have another video on how to teach a service dog to maneuver into a tight space, and I'll link that in the description below. After you've had success at home, you can then move on to bathrooms that dogs are allowed in, such as at pet stores, hardware stores, or a park that has a nice clean bathroom that you can practice in. I like to choose times when there aren't any other people around so I can be goofy and fun and make it a positive experience by simply going in marking and reinforcing and then leaving. So the bathroom becomes this fun place that's highly reinforcing for the dog to enter at first. A tip for pet dogs. If your pet dog is worried about going in your bathroom and that's where you plan to give your dog a bath or blow dry your dog, you can play games of find it where you sprinkle delicious treats around for your dog to find on his Ooh. own and build confidence by being in there and do that multiple times so the dog's starting to have a positive association with that room. And you can also play toss the treat where you're just tossing a treat into the bathroom and then tossing it out. So the dog's practicing going in and out confidently get to get that treat. Right. Building confidence with floor surfaces. Some dogs can be nervous about walking on hard floor or slippery floor or floors with a reflection. So one thing you can do is teach your dog the cue to go to a mat and then put a bunch of different mats over the floor that the dog is worried about and practice marking and reinforcing your dog from moving from one mat to the other. And then as your dog succeeds, you can start to move the mats further and further apart. Go to your mat. Good. Go to your mat. Free. Ready? Twirl. Go to your mat. Down. Adding the noises to the confined space. Another wonderful thing about breaking the training up into small steps is that you can see your dog make progress and you're building on frequent small successes which can be very reinforcing and motivating for the handler. Kiko, Splash, actually Kiko's deaf, and Epic in the bathroom, and this noise Epic's okay with, and this noise she's okay with, but if I make the noise too loud while she's in close proximity, can you see she's slightly backing up, her little elbows are tucking, and now she's, uh, well, she might leave if I make the noise too loud. So if I make this noise, you can see she took a step away from the noise. 
So those noises, those noises are too loud to do in the bathroom right now. But what I could do is make the noises from a distance to get her used to them. But if I'm adding the criteria of being in the bathroom, I can just do the tiny noises before then giving a treat. away like that and then when he comes back I can make it easier so I'm just gonna make a tiny noise on the trash can here and here we go we're gonna go rattle 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 flush trash can one trash can two trash can three boom oh yeah baby to help generalize the concept of remaining calm and confident when loud noises happen when out and about, I like to use a cue to let the dog know a loud noise is going to happen if I know it's going to happen. So I'll say, are you ready? Or there's going to be a noise. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later.